Happy Thanksgiving and welcome to episode two of Health is Easy. Today is Thanksgiving side dishes. I'm making three for you and I'll list what they are, but we gotta get started because cooking has begun. So first recipe is cauliflower mac and cheese. Second recipe is Brussels sprouts with bacon, a little balsamic drizzle, and dried cranberries. And then the third recipe is butternut squash casserole. So I'm doing butternut squash instead of sweet potato for a casserole. And I'm gonna top it with marshmallows and brown sugar. It's gonna be delicious. But we are starting with the cauliflower mac and cheese. So you just buy one head of cauliflower and chop it into florets. You don't have to chop it up fine. Um, leave them about like this size, but we're gonna boil them so they're going to get soft. And when we mix all the ingredients together, the cauliflower is gonna kind of like break apart and become littler, li little chunks. So it'll be kind of like the mac and cheese, um, like the macaroni component. So water is boiling, a big pot of boiling water. I'm going to salt it because that is the first chance that we get to actually salt our cauliflower and then we're going to boil it for about 10 minutes but check it with a fork because you do want it done you don't want there to be like a little bite because it's going we want it to break apart we want the cauliflower to be nice and tender so salt and then I'm gonna throw this in the water for 10 minutes cauliflower is in the boiling water. Now I'm gonna get started while that's cooking on my Brussels sprouts. So I bought one bag of whole Brussels sprouts and I just chopped the ends off of the Brussels sprouts and halved them. Just like that. If you have tiny ones like this little guy, leave it whole. So I left a couple just to show you exactly what I do. So we have the Brussels sprout, this is a nice size, so I'm just gonna chop the end off a little bit. And then put it on my cutting board and chop it in half. Now I'm gonna try to peel away any of the loose leaves. And I want these in a bowl. And I'm actually going to save the little leaves. And we're gonna do something with them later and then throw out the ends so these are tiny so what I'm gonna do is chop the end off still but I'm gonna leave this hole because this hole matches about the same size of one half so I'm gonna leave this one hole if there's any loose leaves I'll just try to pull it apart this one looks pretty good and then do the same for this this one's another little tiny guy we had a leaf fall off so I'm gonna save that another leaf fall off I'm gonna leave this hole because it's tiny and then I'm gonna put the leaves in my bowl. So freaking simple. These recipes are so easy. I make this Brussels sprout recipe every year for Thanksgiving. It is so good. And all of these recipes are something that you can make for your meal prep because we're making them in bulk because it's Thanksgiving. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So we are going to roast the Brussels sprouts. And I have a baking sheet right here. I'm gonna spray with some cooking spray. Pour the Brussels sprouts in the oven. I'm just gonna save the leaves. You wanna put them to the side. So I have whole Brussels sprouts, one whole bag. And it really depends how much people you're feeding. Um, I'm not feeding anybody. I'm just making these recipes for you guys. So I don't, I just did one bag of Brussels sprouts, but at Trader Joe's, my favorite place on earth, it's like heaven, it's like a, an adult playground, they have these shaved Brussels sprouts. Now some, there are some bigger chunks, but for the most part they're shaved. So they're kind of like this. I also bought this because I like to mix the whole chunks and then the shaved. So I will actually cook these on the stove top after I cook some bacon. So I'm gonna cook these in the bacon grease. So that's for later, but I just wanted to let you guys know whole Brussels sprouts and then one bag of shaved Brussels sprouts. Now I'm going to spray these with some cooking spray and I'm just gonna season it with some salt because we are gonna season these a lot with a bunch of other yummy stuff. So we're gonna drizzle some Walden Farms maple syrup on top. We have like a, I bought a balsamic glaze from Trader Joe's. Usually I make my own balsamic glaze, but I saw this at Trader Joe's and this is so much easier. So, so much easier. So just salt on these. Okay. 
And then just mix with your hands. Make sure all the sides are nice and salty. Ooh, we lost one. Right, and if some leaves fall off, that's totally okay. I like to try to like grab them and put them back in this bowl because they will burn when you cook them with the whole Brussels sprouts. So we're gonna roast these to put on top of the final masterpiece later. So they're like crunchy. So they're not gonna be fried, but your family and friends will think that you went above and beyond and fried these leaves. Whenever I make Brussels sprouts, no matter what, whether it's for meal prep or just anything, I'm just flipping the Brussels sprouts so the the cut side is actually on the baking sheet because that'll give it that nice golden brown color. So I'm just flipping them all over to make sure that cut side is down. Um, but whenever I make Brussels sprouts, just in my regular life, I always save the leaves and I make little chips out of them. I do the same thing with kale. I had it, oh my God, I haven't made kale chips in forever, but I season, when I'm just eating like the chips alone, I season them with like salt and then some lemon pepper. Oh, it's so good. Okay, so make sure they're just all in one single layer the best you can. And we are gonna put these in the oven at 450, my magic temperature and they are going to roast for about 20 to 30 minutes. These are actually kind of small Brussels sprouts. None of them are really that big. So I am gonna put them on for 20 minutes and then just check them with a fork and make sure they're at the doneness that I like. And we are going to throw everything in the pan together at the very end. So if they have like a little bite to it, that's totally okay because we are going to throw it in the pan and mix it all together. So they'll be getting another set of like heat hitting them. So 450, we're gonna start at 20 minutes and then check them from there. Yum, in the oven they go. Now I have another baking dish because I'm not gonna waste any time and I am going to get started on my butternut squash casserole. Trader Joe's once again saves the day. Trader Joe's pre-cut butternut squash. Now for Thanksgiving, they have these huge bags. So we are doing two big bags and we are going to roast these because we wanna mash them, but I love the flavor that the roasting them gives. So we're gonna roast these with some cinnamon and then we're gonna mash it all together. It's gonna be, I've never, I just made up this recipe off the top of my head. I'm just, we're gonna, I, it, there's no, it's gonna be delicious because I'm using the same concept that I usually do for my sweet potato casserole that I make on Thanksgiving, but butternut squash resembles sweet potato the closest and it is so incredibly low in carb. So this will save you so many carbs and you're not gonna miss the sweet potato because you're really gonna get that flavor from this. So, we have a nice big baking dish of butternut squash. If you watch my Insta stories, you know how much I love butternut squash. So we're just putting a more uh, cooking spray on top just so the seasoning sticks and we're gonna do um, cinnamon. This will not be the only time we are seasoning these guys. This is just, the first initial step. I'm also gonna grab just a little bit of pumpkin pie spice. Pumpkin pie spice just has other spices like nutmeg and clove, and that will just bring another like layer of flavor to these besides just the cinnamon, so I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that just to get it a deeper flavor. All right, pumpkin pie spice. Oh my God, it smells so good. Just right over the top, and then just quickly mix with your hands again. And we are gonna do just a pinch of salt as well over these. And these also cook at a 450 degree oven, so it is perfect if you are cooking these on the same day or getting it pre-ready for Thanksgiving. This is a, these are great side dishes that all cook at the same temperature. This is a dish that you can make ahead of time, absolutely. Do all of this part, do the roasting and everything first. And then when you can just save the mashed butternut squash and then on Thanksgiving Day you can top it with all the good stuff that I'm gonna top it with later. All right, so this also goes into a 450 degree oven for about, we're gonna, we want them really, really soft because we're gonna mash them. So I'm thinking 25 to 30 minutes.
10 minutes is up, I'm just gonna drain the cauliflower. So I'm gonna bring my hot pot back over, put the cauliflower in. We are going to do one cup of light shredded cheese. Trader Joe's, of course, has a great light shredded cheese blend. And one cup goes in here. And then we need two ounces of cream cheese. And of course, I am using whipped cream cheese because the macros are best. Just a splash, about a tablespoon of heavy cream. So I am just mixing this all together. Look at how cheesy that is. All right, once you mix everything together, you get the cheese, the cream cheese, and the heavy cream all incorporated. You wanna do this when the cauliflower is very hot because you wanna melt everything together. Then you're gonna do one tablespoon of yellow mustard. Just trust me on this. The tanginess really brings a nice like salty component. It's delicious. So just a tablespoon. I'm just going to eyeball it. Mix that in. Now garlic powder to taste. I love garlic. So I am just going to sprinkle some in there, but I would say about a tablespoon or two, depending on how much you like garlic. I think garlic just enhances the flavor so nicely. And then also just a pinch of salt. Oh my gosh, it smells so good, the garlic powder. I cannot even. I'm gonna do one more pinch of salt. Salt really does make a huge difference. And then just some cracked black pepper. I'm gonna show you this. You're not gonna believe this is cauliflower. Would you believe that this is cauliflower? Amazing. Okay, so I have a baking dish. You can use any size, um, you know, like an eight by eight is perfect. I'm just gonna use this one. Now, what I'm gonna do, just so I can get the right macros for you guys, and if you want it to be exact, you can do the same. I have my scale, it is off. I'm putting this on top of my scale, and I'm turning my scale on so it reads zero while this is empty. I'm going to fill this with the cauliflower mixture. half a cup of cheese on top. So the scale is still on. It's still reading. It's reading on my, the weight of the mixture. And then I'm just gonna top it with the cheese. Crack a little bit of pepper. And just a little bit of salt on top. The cheese is going to get bubbly in the oven and like bubble up and crisp up. So it's gonna be like this salty and cheesy mixture, like a crust on top of like a hard crust. So the scale to me right now reads 929. I'm gonna take a picture of it so I don't forget. And then I will just divide 929 by however many servings I want this to be. So let's say five servings. I'm gonna divide 929 by five, and then whatever that is, that will be the serving in grams. And so I'll give you the macros for everything and it'll be on the recipe, but we are gonna put this in a 450 degree oven, which is perfect because everything else is at a 450 degree oven. And we're really just melting the cheese on top. So just put it in for about 10 minutes and I will show you what it looks like when it comes out. All right, little update for you guys. So Brussels sprouts are done. 20 minutes was all they needed because I have little tiny ones. So just check. Do for 20 minutes. If you have bigger Brussels sprouts, just put a fork through them, see if they're done. These are perfectly done. So I just put them in a bowl. I am cooking four slices of bacon. I'm actually cooking five slices of bacon because I want to do something with the other slice. I'll show you. But, so my bacon is cooking, and that is for the Brussels sprouts. So I'm just cooking off some bacon, and then when it's done, I'm gonna put it on a paper towel, but I'm gonna keep the heat on, on medium, and cook the shaved Brussels sprouts in the bacon grease. The timer just went off for the cauliflower mac and cheese at 10 minutes. The cheese is melted, but I wanna put it on a low broil for like two to three minutes just to get that bubbly brown golden crust on top. So low broil, two minutes, watch it. You don't want it to burn. 
So all I'm waiting for is the bacon to finish cooking. And as soon as that is done, I will show you what I do with the shaved Brussels sprouts. And this is almost done, it's so fast. So I will see you in just a second when the bacon's done. All right, so the cauliflower's done. cauliflower mac and cheese oh my god i'll show you more of that in a bit but we got some cooking to do so there's a little bit too much bacon grease for my liking we don't need that much so i'm just gonna take a glass and carefully pour some of it out all right so most of the bacon grease is out of the pan, which is fine because we can just add a little bit more. I have my bag of shaved Brussels sprouts and I'm just gonna add it right in. As you can see, there's some bigger chunks in here and that's fine, they're very thin. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt. And I'm just gonna let those cook down on medium heat just to soften the bigger parts of it, of the, the bigger chunks of the Brussels sprouts. And we're just gonna, I'm just gonna saute this for about five minutes. And then I will add the bigger Brussels sprouts into the whole mixture. So while the shredded Brussels sprouts are just cooking on the stove on medium heat, I'm not touching it. They're just getting nice brown and they're kind of like getting nice and golden brown with that bacon grease flavor. It's delicious. So I have four slices of bacon that I'm just going to break up into little chunks because we are going to mix the bacon in with the Brussels sprouts. And then we're also going to toss some dried cranberries in the mixture, which has like a oh, this recipe is my favorite. I make it literally every single year and I've just altered it in a way to make it a little bit more macro friendly with just a few different ingredients like the Walden Farms maple syrup. It's so good. So we're just gonna leave the chunks of bacon kind of like this size. Dried cranberries, a quarter of a cup, 40 grams. And then I have this balsamic glaze that I bought from Trader Joe's. They have them at every grocery store, so take a look. And I'm just gonna drizzle this over the top of everything. And it's nice to have this because you can set it at the table and everybody can drizzle some more on top because balsamic glaze is like thick and syrupy. It's, it's very sweet and has just an amazing flavor and it is so amazing on these Brussels sprouts. So let's head on over and check how the shredded Brussels sprouts are doing. They smell so great. So if you can see, they're a little brown. We don't want this to be mush. So these look great. I, it has been cooking for about five minutes. I'm gonna add in the whole Brussels sprouts or the halved Brussels sprouts. And I am gonna toss everything together. 40 grams of dried cranberries. Four slices of bacon. And now I'm just gonna transfer it into my bowl. All right, I have 855 as the weight of this mixture, so I'm just gonna take a picture of it so I don't forget. Oh my goodness. So we're not quite done with the Brussels sprouts yet. There, we have a couple little finishing touches to do. Spray with cooking spray. And we are gonna pour the little leaves. And we are gonna bake them at 450 in the oven just for a few minutes. Now spray these and we're gonna salt them. This is gonna be like a nice salty, crunchy little chip on top of the Brussels sprouts. This is a freaking amazing little trick to just amp up your Brussels sprouts. Now I would definitely save these and do this like right before you serve it on Thanksgiving or right before you serve it at a party because the, if you do if you do these chips ahead of time, they will just get soggy. So I'm gonna put these in an oven, 450 for about 
three to five minutes, but I'm gonna watch them because they will burn very quickly. Okay, while I wait for the little leaves to be done for the Brussels sprouts, the butternut squash is actually done out of the oven. It actually took 30 minutes for it to get to a softness, softness that I like. I'm just gonna transfer the butternut squash into this big bowl so then I can mash it all together. Now I'm just gonna mash everything. This is why you wanna make sure that you cook these nice and long so you can mash them with no problem. A little, um, don't tell anyone, stevia. Liquid stevia, Shh, it's okay, it's Thanksgiving. Just a couple squirts. I'm gonna do four squirts of stevia. I hate that word. I hate that word. I'm just gonna mix the stevia in just to sweeten it up a little bit. It's Thanksgiving, it's okay. I am just smoothing out the top. Oh my God, that is so good. Oh. Don't you dare not do the stevia. The stevia, whoo, whoo, that's yummy. All right, now we have 40 grams of brown sugar that I am just going to sprinkle on the top. I like using my hands. Oh my goodness. Now I'm just gonna do one side, so I'm just gonna split it in half. So you have the option to have the sugary coating or not. And then, oh my gosh, 60 grams, two servings of mini marshmallows. I'm gonna top it on the side with the brown sugar. Pressing it down. I am just gonna put just a little bit of cinnamon over the top of everything. All right, this is the finished product. Well, semi-finished product. So it is layered with brown sugar and then marshmallows on top. And then this side is just the butternut squash. So if someone doesn't want this sugary topping, you have the option or you can just, there's enough marshmallows to do a nice single layer on the whole entire thing. So it's really up to you. I'm just leaving one open just for me, but I'm gonna broil since the mixture is hot already. So if you're making this ahead of time, you this you can stop here and then put it in the oven when it's time to eat for Thanksgiving and just heat it at like 350 for like 20 minutes and then finish it with a broil. But right now, since it's nice and warm, I'm just gonna put it on a low broil for about five-ish minutes. And I'm just gonna watch it because I don't wanna burn the marshmallows, but I do want to like brulee them and like get them nice and charred and gooey. Yes. Okay, now time to finish everything else. This was the simplest thing ever. Once again, I'm making this all in one day and I'm not stressed at all. These recipes are so simple. These are great for meal prep too, just saying. So we have these delicious Brussels sprouts with bacon and dried cranberries. I have the little chips that came out of the oven. They actually cooked for seven minutes at 450 and they are like, I don't know if you can hear that, but they are, watch. I hope you can hear that. They're crunchy and salty. When you're going to bring this to Thanksgiving dinner to the table, I would just top it with some cranberries just to like make the presentation beautiful. But I'm going to top the chips just right in like the center. And then I am just gonna drizzle some of this glaze right over the top. And then just for presentation, I'm just gonna throw some dried cranberries all over just to make it look nice and beautiful. And then I have some more chips left that you can just, you know, bring in a little bowl to the table if anyone wants to add some crispies on top. But take a look at these load. Oh, I forgot something. One moment, please. Walden Farms maple syrup. 
what you want to do is heat this up because see how clumpy it is like it's like gelatin you don't want those clumps you want it nice a nice little drizzle so I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave for like 30 seconds now we're just gonna drizzle the hot maple syrup over the whole mixture One more step for the cauliflower mac and cheese. And then we are done, guys. Done. So easy. So remember that little piece of bacon that I was saving? Just for like extraness. It's Thanksgiving. Bacon is a necessity. Bacon brings joy and happiness. So you can do more than one slice. I just did one, but I chopped. I didn't chop. I broke it up with my hands a little bit. We are just gonna crumble that over the top. Nothing, nothing crazy. Like I said, you can do a lot more bacon than that. I use the Trader Joe's bacon, the um, uncured bacon, which is 1.5 grams of fat for one slice. So you can do, you can cook up some bacon and put it on in like a little bowl so people can top their mac and cheese with it if they want. But I need to show you everything because everything is done and I cannot believe that this is sitting in front of me right now. Oh my gosh. Here are the finished products. So this is the butternut squash casserole. Now, oh my gosh, this is like so bubbly and campfire-y. I don't even know, like look at it. <gasps> oh, I have to stop, I can't deal. So the macros for this, there's eight servings in here. So for a 172 gram serving, which is freaking huge, there are, it's one protein, zero fat, and 20 carbs for 172 grams. I'm gonna take out one serving of everything so you can see how big each serving is so you just know how good the macros truly are. These are the Brussels sprouts. Loaded. This is all crunchy and crispy little chips. Wow, yum. So one serving of the Brussels sprouts is 143 grams, which is another pretty damn big serving. It makes six servings total, and one serving is five grams of protein, one fat, and 16 carbs, which is amazing for maple syrup and balsamic glaze and bacon and dried cranberries. Oh my God. And the cauliflower mac and cheese. Yum. For one serving of that, it is 155 grams, another big serving. And the macros for that, 12 protein, seven grams of fat, and only six carbs. So really, really protein packed with this mac and cheese recipe. I'm gonna put a serving of each on a plate and have Brian taste test and tell us what he thinks. All right guys, this is one serving of everything. So Brussels sprouts, the butternut squash casserole, and the mac and cheese. One serving of everything. These are huge servings. So right now, Brian's gonna do a taste test of each and every one. Which one are you gonna do in first? I think it's gonna have Back to be a sweet potato. Back up a little bit. They're butternut squash. Butternut squash, sorry. Let me see the bite that you're getting with that yummy. Marshmallow, good one, right? Mmm. So cinnamony. Really? I've never made this. It before. tastes like sweet potatoes. Really? Okay, good. Okay. What's next? Uh, the, the, the cauliflower mac and cheese. Mm. That's super creamy and flavorful. Mm. You know, to the Brussels sprouts, all with bacon. Mmm. So happy right now, guys. What's your favorite? Do you have a favorite? The butternut squash. Really? Yeah. Cool. The best ever. I hope you like these recipes. They were so easy. Every single one of these are fantastic for your meal prep, to be honest. If you wanted to do the butternut squash casserole for a meal prep, you could totally do it and just either top it with a little bit of marshmallows or just leave that part out because that stevia that we added, that little secret ingredient, really makes it sweet and it tastes like sweet potatoes. So give these a try. You like just, what? It's like pumpkin -y. It's pumpkin because we used a little bit of pumpkin pie spice. Mm. 
love these. My kitchen smells amazing. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys make these recipes. Please subscribe if you love this cooking series. Please comment below and like the video if you enjoyed this, if you liked the recipes, and please let me know in the comment section what recipes you would like to see in the future and if you did end up trying these, how you liked them. So I will catch you next time for episode three of Health is Easy. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye guys.